एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू एडिव सर्च क्लिनिक्स आई एम डॉक्टर गुंजन देसाई एंड टुडे वी विल कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन ऑन पेनक्रेटिक सिस्टिक लीजन्स दिस इज पार्ट फोर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सी नाउ सम इमेजिंग एंड सिस फ्लूड एनालिसिस बेजिक्स सो सो फार वी हैव सीन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ पेनक्रेटिक सिस्टिक नियोप्लाजम वी हैव सीन द एपीथीलियल एंड नॉन एपीथीलियल सिस वी हैव सीन सिस ऑफ मेलिग्नन पोटेंशियल एंड वी हैव फिनिश्ड two important non mucinous cystic neoplasms that are commonly seen in practice that is serous cystic neoplasm and so today we are going to now start some important points when it comes to managing mucinous neoplasms and that is where a lot of different guidelines say different stuff and it is a bit confusing so we will try to simplify this by going in a step by step manner we have already seen this that for all cystic lesions you need to classify them you need to see the clinical presentation imaging characteristics cis fluid analysis and cytology or cis wall biopsy which is endoscopic ultrasound guided when required and based on the upper four steps is how you decide the treatment plan so it is important for you to understand that the first step in identifying a good treatment plan or understanding which guideline to utilize or which step to utilize for a particular patient is the first four steps so we have finished nearly the first three of them today we will finish the fourth step and then we will go towards mucinous neoplasms when it comes to imaging okay there are six important points that you need to see whenever you see a scan or whenever you advise a scan for pancreatic cystic lesion the most important points are what we are highlighting here and based on imaging there are some features that suggest that the lesion is mucinous and the lesion may have a high probability of cancer and these are the points that we need to understand so whenever we see a scan for pancreatic cystic lesion the first and foremost thing that is important is to know the morphology of the cyst we have an entire video on cyst morphology so now you know the size of the cyst the location of the cyst and its relation to main pancreatic duct so some of the cysts that communicate with main pancreatic duct and this has implications on management that we will see you also look at multiplicity which is common in itmn and it is common in syndromic cystic neoplasms then you look at worry some features and high risk stigmata which we will see now and you if you are doing a follow up scan you have to look at the rate of growth on follow up examination so these six points are very important when you are doing a report or you are reporting an imaging study of pancreatic cystic neoplasm now worry some features and high risk features can be there on clinical setting can be there for blood test can be there for imaging and can be there for cytology so what we are going to do is for this particular presentation we are going to look at worrisome and high risk features from imaging point of view so what are worrisome features now these features have been given by different guidelines so that you identify the cystic neoplasms that may be harboring a malignancy okay so what are worry some features on imaging the size should be greater than 3 cm thicker than enhancing cyst walls main pancreatic duct dilatation more than 5 mm that is when an ipmn is defined if the mpd is more than 5 mm it is an ipmn so mpd dilatation to 5 to 9 mm with or without a compressive effect and non enhancing mural nodules or solid components in the cyst so these are very some features on imaging three features of the cyst and mpd dilatation when it comes to high risk stigmata obstructive jaundice main pancreatic duct dilatation 10 mm or more and enhancing mural nodule or solid component if a cyst has these high risk features it is very simple that the patient is going to need surgery if there are very some features then an endoscopic ultrasound and cytology is recommended however if you see guidelines most of them for all patients with very some and high risk stigmata 
suggest an endoscopic ultrasound with cis fluid analysis and cytology if you have the resources and facility at your center. So now coming to cis fluid analysis, what are the key points that you need to remember when you are seeing a report or when you are advising cis fluid analysis? One important point is that we need to correlate all the tests, the clinical presentation, the imaging findings and the cis fluid analysis. Understand that if imaging has ductal communication, the amylase is going to be high in the cis fluid. If there is columnar epithelium, it will have high CEA and CA7024. When it comes to cytology, you are going to see the lining or you are going to see the cell of origin. And the other thing that you can do on cis fluid is molecular analysis, which can be done by next generation sequencing. Or you can do slides and do immunohistochemistry. So molecular analysis commonly done for KRAS mutations, GNAS mutations, P53, SMAD4, P16, VHL and RNF43. We will see how these markers differ in different uh, cystic lesions and they are becoming diagnostic if you do cis fluid analysis and cytology. Now, whenever we are doing cyst fluid analysis, the first thing that we need to identify is whether the cyst is mucinous or non-mucinous. So, if you have a non-mucinous cyst, the first three parts of this series have already shown you how to manage it. So, the upcoming discussions are going to be predominantly based on these steps and identification that the lesion is mucinous and then how to apply guidelines and how to manage this patients. So once you know that the lesion is non-mucinous, we have already seen how to manage it. So now we focus on step two, that is identification that the lesion is mucinous. The two most important mucinous cystic lesions are mucinous cystic neoplasm and IPMN or intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. So step two is identifying between MCN and IPMN if you can. And then step three is identification of dysplasia and malignancy. Because if the cyst harbors malignancy, you can't observe that patient. So in pancreatic cystic lesions, the most important steps are these three. Okay, And then you see if the patient goes into the surveillance arm or the surgery arm. So that is how you decide your management. So in step one, Mucinous versus non-mucinous. So how can cis fluid analysis help you in understanding this? We have already seen the imaging features. So the three most common non-mucinous neoplastic lesions that you will see or non-neoplastic lesions which are most common. So we have already seen that pseudocyst is the most common non-epithelial and non-neoplastic lesion when it comes to pancreatic cyst. So in pseudocyst, amylase is high, CEA is low, okay, there is no epithelium, that is why it is known as pseudocyst and all molecular markers are negative, okay. So among the non-mucinous cystic lesions, the most common is pseudocyst up to 85% and these are the features, the only thing that's positive in a pseudocyst is high amylase. When it comes to serous cystic neoplasm, the term itself says it's serous. Serous things have clear cytoplasm. Okay, So when you do cytology, we know that the cell of origin of serous cystic neoplasm is centroacinar cell. This squamous to low cuboidal. So when you do cytology, you will have similar epithelium with clear cytoplasm and hemosiderin-laden macrophages. Okay, There will be no mucin low CEA and low amylase because there is no ductal communication of serous cystic neoplasm, right? Molecular marker that you can see is only if VHL is mutated, it can also be seen in cystic pancreatic neuroendocrine neoplasm. So VHL mutation in cystic lesions can be in two tumors, serous cyst adenoma or cystic pancreatic neuroendocrine neoplasm. The third type of cystic lesion non-mucinous is lymphoepithelial cyst. Now, lymphoepithelial cyst has high CEA, okay, and this can confuse with mucinous cystic neoplasm, 
but the cytology and the molecular analysis help in differentiation. The cytology shows squamous epithelium with keratinous debris and cholesterol crystals and all molecular markers are negative. So lymphoepithelial cyst, high CEA, just like mucinous neoplasms, but the cytology and molecular studies can help in differentiation. So these are the three most common non-mucinous cystic lesions in the pancreas. And the, this table will help you in answering questions, in understanding what your patient has, and in planning management. So now going to step two, we are looking at MCN and IPMN, which are the two most common mucinous cystic neoplasms. Remember that intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, it is inside the duct. So of course, it has a ductal communication. And we already established a dictum that whenever there is ductal communication, the amylase levels in the cyst fluid are very high. So amylase levels are very high in IPMN. The second important marker is CEA or carcinoembryonic antigen. A level greater than 192 nanogram per ml has accuracy of 80% in giving mucinous etiology. Remember that here inside the cyst fluid, CEA is not a tumor marker. It is just a marker of mucinous etiology. The cyst can still be low risk or high risk. So now you want to understand what is low risk and high risk mucinous. So understand the steps. You have seen non-mucinous first. Now you are seeing mucinous. In mucinous, you have established that this is IPMN, MCN, the mucin is there in fluid, amylase levels are high in IPMN, CEA is greater than 192 nanogram per ml. But now we want to understand if it is high risk or low risk. The best characterization is given by cytology and molecular analysis. So four important cis fluid steps, amylase, CEA, cytology and molecular. So in cytology, the high grade nuclear A type and changes versus low and intermediate grade. These changes can be suggested in cytology and conclusive evidence of low versus high risk is given by molecular analysis. So in molecular analysis, there are markers that suggest mucinous etiology, which is KRAS and RNF43. These two suggest that the cyst is mucinous. And genus mutations are specific for IPMN or malignancy arising from IPMN. PDAC is pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. So if there is an established solid tumor in IPMN, then also genus will be mutated. Only IPMN genus will be mutated. Now let us see about risk stratification, low risk versus high risk. So like I said, there are two important things that help in risk stratification. One is cytology. So what are high risk cysts in cytology? There should be high grade A type here. What is suggestive of high grade A type here? We have already seen in our pathology, Robins, small cell size, high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratios. That means that the cell is small and the nucleus is large. Okay, so some complex terms with very simple meanings. Hyper or hypochromasia. So the color is either dark or very light. Okay, it's not normal. And nuclear membrane irregularity. So if you see these features, it is a high grade cystic neoplasm or carcinoma. Okay. In molecular analysis, P53, SMAD4, P16, cycling dependent kinase N2A, PIK3CA, and PTEP. If these markers are mutated, it is a high risk cyst. So understand that there is something known as an adenoma carcinoma sequence or a cystic lesion carcinoma sequence. There is pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia. We will see all these terms in a separate video. It's a big topic altogether. But understand that cancers develop in a stepwise fashion. So some mutations occur early, some occur late. So in low risks, you will just have markers of mucinous etiology, KRAS and genus, RNF43. They are early mutations, okay, but 
these mutations p53 smat4 p16 and these mutations are late mutations that is they are getting mutated very late in the adenoma carcinoma sequence so when these mutations are present it is very highly likely that the cyst harbors carcinoma in situ or frank carcinoma right so this is how you can do risk stratification so to conclude Whenever we are doing cis fluid analysis, we should understand all this content that is there in this video. That clinical presentation, imaging characteristics, the six points, the worrisome features and the high risk features on imaging and clinical features. And based on that, you decide your treatment plan and your three important steps that can be understood by doing cis fluid analysis and molecular analysis is whether the lesion is mucinous, if it's mucinous, is it MPA, MCN or IPMN and is it low risk or high risk. So with that, we come to end of a very important section in the pancreatic cystic lesions understanding. And here we have formed the base for you to now move towards mucinous neoplasms of pancreas. Okay, so we will see that in the next video. And then we will look at the guidelines and algorithmic management options. We have seen that our website carries a lot of videos. So if you missed any past series, series on liver anatomy, pancreatic anatomy, CT, okay, MRI, a lot of different topics are there. Books, recommendations are there from our faculty. So you can have a look. Thank you.